humanity can build artifacts, should they? I believe the, the dominant political question this century, 21st century, will be about species dominance. Should, should humanity build artifacts? Yeah, now these, these, these machines would be veritably godlike, right? Their capacities would be, I mean, if you, if you have something that's handheld, their, their mental capacities could be trillion, trillion times above the human level. But if you use a technology called reversible computing, there's no heat problem. Like, like today's laptop, if, if I have a laptop in front of me here, if I put that laptop on my lap in the winter, it'll keep me warm, right? Because there's so much heat coming out of it. And the reason why there's so much heat coming out is because uh, today's computing uh, uses irreversible computing methods. And what that means is, uh, well, I'll explain a little. Take, take, take an AND gate, like, like two inputs, one output. It's an AND gate. So if there's, a, if there's a voltage on the first input and a voltage on the second input, then the output is a voltage. But if one of the inputs has zero volts, there's zero volts come out. So the signal only comes out if both of them, both of the inputs, have a voltage. So it's called an AND gate. Right? Now an AND gate is not reversible. And reversible means that the, if the signal go, comes out, you can reverse it in time, send it back into the circuit, and get the original input. Right? That's, that's reversible. Now an AND gate is not reversible because it's two bits in and one bit out. So if you're going to have a reversible circuit, you have to have the same number of bits in as, as out. So, so it can go either way in time. It, it, can, it can be reversed. Now, uh, there's a branch of, of computer science called PhysComp, Physics of Computation. And it asks really fundamental questions, for, as, as a physicist would, about computing. And one of the questions is, is it possible to compute without generating heat? C can that be done? And the answer is yes, if, if you uh, do not use irreversible computing. So if, if you use reversible computing, so, so what goes in can be sent back again in time, backwards in time, to get the original input. So if you do that, then uh, you know, it can be shown that no heat generated. Now that may not sound very significant, but actually, if you think about it, it's one of the most significant discoveries in computer science of the 20th century. Because think about what it implies. If there's no heat problem, you can have massive three-dimensional circuitry, right? Massive. So why, why limit yourself then to, a, to 3D circuitry that's the size of your hand, you know, a, a handheld object? You could have a massive artificial brain using reversible circuitry, reversible computing, that's as big as a room, like as big as this room, right? which is what, I don't know, five, what would you say, five meters cubed? It's quite a small room as rooms go, but you know, it's a massive amount of circuitry. Yeah. And you can go way beyond that. You, you, could, you could have a massive artificial brain circuitry the size of a building, or a city, or an asteroid, or a planet. Now, if you have it as big as a planet, you'll probably have gravitational problems. <laughs> but you can imagine an asteroid-sized artificial brain in the future. Why not? I mean, the technology is going to allow it. And, I mean, imagine... Well, it, you can't. You can't. You cannot imagine. What would such a creature think? What, what, what would it do with its time, with, it, with its massive circuitry? What, what, what could it do? But. But this is the sort of thing that's coming this century because uh, you know, we know it's possible. 
and usually if something can be done it tends to be done and that, that seems to be the experience of, of history okay so sooner or later humanity will have to come to terms with this huge issue of, of species dominance does and by, by species i mean you know the human species human beings are we as a not, not just as a people but as a species are we prepared to become number two on the planet we're so accustomed to being the dominant species being number one for, for you know, hundred thousand years or whatever as long, long as homo sapiens sapiens have been around are we prepared to give up our status as number one I mean, it's, it's a very deep powerful question which which i believe will dominate our global politics this century it will become the number one question i mean it'll just eclipse the other major issues of our time like global warming and nuclear holocaust and overpopulation and poverty and you know, all, all those big problems but all, all those other problems are still in a sense human scale type problems but but this one species dominance it's a different category of problem, right? We're no longer in charge. We're number two. So, uh, how how then do you answer the question? You should should humanity build these things? So let's let's jump ahead a few decades into the future and try to imagine how this issue will unfold. You know, what's very likely to happen. What, what are the most probable scenarios? Or, or let's stick to one, probably the most probable scenario. What, what, what's going to happen? Well, uh, as I was saying earlier, I, I think it highly likely there's going to be a massive home robot, artificial brain controlled industry, huge. And, and there'll be zillions of other applications as, as well as, as artificial intelligence gets smarter and smarter, more brain, human, more human brain-like computers, as we understand more about neuroscience, the actual principles of how the brain works, then we put those ideas into the machines. So the, the, at, at the moment, uh, artificial brains are influenced strongly by how, how our human brains work. So it's largely a one-way street. Yeah, the, the, the information flow is from neuroscience to neuroengineering. But in time, the, these artificial brain models will become so elaborate and so powerful and so useful, they may feed back into neuroscience, help, helping the neuroscience guys um, investigate principles of how the brain works. You know, you, you can, the, the, the two will wed. So neuroscience and neuroengineering will become effectively one subject. In, in the same way as experimental physics and theoretical physics have been effectively one subject and influence each other powerfully for the last few centuries. Right? So see, I see that coming. So, uh, so imagine then every couple of years, uh, go, go into the 2020s, you know, you, you, you're buying your home robot and you, your neighbor calls you over and says, hey, want to see my new model? Look, it's smarter, it has a sense of humor, its vocabulary is three times richer than it was the, the previous model I bought, blah, blah, blah. So uh, you're very impressed, so you go up and you buy yourself the, the next generation of home robot. Right? Now, after about a decade or so of this, you know, a kind of Moore's law applying to home robots and artificial brain technology, it should become fairly obvious to millions, if not billions of people across the planet that, hey, these machines, these, these home robots, these artificial brains are getting smarter and smarter all the time. So after a while, let's say this is human intelligence level, human IQ, if you like. And here's, let's say, robot IQ or A IQ, artificial intelligence quotient. Now, from what I've just been saying, these robots, they're getting smarter and smarter year by year. Right? So the gap, the difference in between human intelligence level and robot intelligence level, that gap 
is going to get smaller and smaller. So what's going to happen as that gap closes? Well then virtually everybody will start asking the obvious questions like, for example, are we, and by we I mean human beings, us as a species, across the planet, are we going to allow our machines to become as smart as we are? Or could they become smarter than we are? Could they become a lot smarter than we are? Is that a good thing? Is that not dangerous? Should there be a limit, like a, a, a global, I mean planetary, legal limit on just how smart these machines are allowed to become? What about different philosophies, different approaches? I mean, some people, for example, would argue, and I'll, uh, pretty soon I need, I need to start introducing some new labels for, for new social, political, ideological groups as, as, as this issue um, becomes more and more concrete, crystallizes, and, and people take sides. So uh, let's, let's, let's introduce the first one. So those, there will be people who will say building these things is a kind of God building because effectively you would be building gods, right? a machine that would outclass the human brain by a factor of trillions of trillions of trillions of times. I mean, you can't even imagine what such a, a machine would be like or what it would do.